thank you, thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> I'll be take your seats. Thank you very much. I can do the Kanyao also, no? <laughs> University of Cordillera Scale, uh, Jesus Jerry uh, Benjamin Salvosa, President Ray Dean Salvosa, Member of the Board of Trustees, Nene Salvosa Bowman, the Executive Officers of the University, the Deans of the University, faculty members, the 2019 graduates of the University of the Cordilleras, our dear parents, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> well, I am Eliseo M. Rio Jr., Under Secretary for Operation of the Department of Information and Communication Technology. Sa opisina, ang ganda ng ating title, no? Under Secretary for Operation. Pero pagdating sa bahay, umikli ng konti, naging under na lang. <laughs> First of all, thank you for this distinct, distinct honor of inviting me to be the commencement speaker for your 73rd commencement exercise. It gave me the chance to be back to my beloved city of Baguio and to be with my alma mater and my extended family, the Salvosa. You see, I spent 15 years of my early life in Baguio. My father being assigned as a member of the Corps of Professors of the Philippine Military Academy. And the last four years of that 15 years, I spent as a high school student in Baguio Colleges, where I graduated in 1961. Uh, but when I was finishing my third year high school year, my family has to move down to Baguio because my father retired from the service. And so that I can graduate, uh, in Bayo Colleges, I was left behind and I stayed with the Salvosa family. Therefore, I can claim that the Bayo Colleges president, the late Dr. Benjamin Salvosa, and the late Mrs. Evangelina Salvosa were my foster parents for one year. And the Salvosa children were my brothers and sisters for that year. I remember that Ray Salvosa <clears throat> and I were part of the Baguio City contingent to the 10th World Scout Jamboree that was held in uh, Mount Makiling, Los Banos, way back July 17 to 26 of 1959. There were 44 countries that attended that jamboree with about 12,200 scouts from all over the world. What was memorable with that jamboree was that on the opening day parade where all the uh, contingent from each country uh, were in that parade, the Baguio City contingent, instead of wearing the short pants of the Boy Scout, we wore the Igorot G string, just like what we have seen today. No? So if you would like to see President Rachel Bosak in Bahad, try to look at that picture way back in 1959. So the whole contingent from Baguio was in G string, Igorot G string. And we danced the Kanyao when we were already in front of the grandstand. The honor then was uh, uh, President Carlos P. Garcia, no? the President of the Philippines. And it was a big hit. We were in the newspapers all over the world with that uh, <clears throat> costume that we had. No short pants, but we have coat and tie, no? these things. 
However, I remember, I don't know if Ray remembers this, the priest from uh, St. Louis University came down and pulled out all the uh, scout participants of the University of St. Louis, St. Louis University because of indecent exposure. <laughs> Well, we see that around now, and there is nothing invisible about it. It is a cultural uh, pride that we have here in Baguio City. Now. That four years I spent in Baguio Colleges High School, especially that one year that I stayed with the Salvosa family, molded my life to what it is now. I saw firsthand how the late president, Dr. Benjamin Salvosa, pursued this vision in making Baguio Colleges as a beacon of higher education, not only in Baguio, but in the Cordillera region. When I was assigned in the academic group of the Philippine Military Academy, year uh, 1970 and 1972, Baguio Colleges was then a foundation, and it was already staying in this uh, building that we have now. I spent around two years as evening class instructor in the Baguio Colleges Foundation after office hours in PMA as my way of giving back to my alma mater for its valuable contribution to my future life. To the 2019 graduates of the University of Cordilleras, you are now facing the future. When you wake up tomorrow, it will be the first day of the rest of your life. It will be the first day of the rest of your life now. The university has prepared you for that future. And whatever that future will be, the generic of the university is imprinted and in your soul and will always be with you. As a government official in the newest department of the government, the Department of Information and Communication Technology, which is just three years old, Allow me to present how the ICT will help graduates in your future. Whatever your educational degrees, your profession, your future life, information and com communication technology or ICT will be a disruptor in your professional field. We are now in the fourth industrial revolution, the age of information. It is the oncoming convergence of smartphones, robotics, artificial intelligence, internet, big data, 3D printing, biotechnology, and quantum computing. As a background, the first industrial revolution began in Europe from the 18th to the 19th century, following the mechanization of agriculture and industrial production as the consequence of the invention of the steam engine. Steam engine moved from manual labor of human and animals to a mechanic mechanized uh, procedure, which is the steam engine. The second industrial revolution followed in this, uh, also in the 19th century and continued up to the 20th century with the invention of the internal combustion engine harnessing carbon energy or petroleum that made possible the rapid deployment of transport 
and the widespread use of electric power. The third industrial revolution, also called the digital revolution, assayed the use of computers, the internet, and the rapid adoption of information and communication technology. The use of computers has really disrupted our life. There is no aspect of activity in the human, uh, in the human life that does not use computers. No? And the fourth industrial revolution is a continuation of that. In the third industrial revolution, we were using computers mostly as standalone. But in the fourth, we are going to use it as connected devices. So we have the internet connecting our computers. And now, they are as small. Our computers are now small, as small as a smartphone that you can carry in your hand. The fourth industrial revolution is building on the infrastructure of the third and is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between physical, digital, and biological skills. And the fourth industrial revolution is evolving much faster than the first, second, and third at an exponential rather than a linear pace. It is disrupting almost every industry in every country. And it transformed entire system of production, management, and governance. Is the Philippines ready for the fourth industrial revolution? Sadly, much has needed to be done. And this is the focus of the department of the ICT to fast track our country to embrace this revolution to make the Philippines competitive with other countries. The ICT priority is to improve the Philippine information infrastructure or what we call the infrastructure. We are one of the countries with slowest internet speed and most costly internet access. We have done the following to improve our situation in our department. First, we allow the entry of a third major telco player to provide healthy competition among the players in the telecom industry and to improve telecom services and reduce costs of subscription. The third player, whose name is uh, Dito Telecom Unity, used to be a uh, is now rolling out their network and will begin commercial operation by the middle part of 2020. Second, we entered into a memorandum of agreement with Facebook to provide two terabits of bandwidth capacity to the country. If you compare two terabits, Globe has an overall capacity of about four 0.2 terabits, so that's about one half uh, capacity of globe and about uh, one third capacity of that of PLDT Smart. For the first time in our history, our government will put up two cable landing stations, one in Valer Aurora facing the Pacific and another in Puro Point facing the west. Philippine Sea, and we'll be getting our bandwidth, one terabyte from Los Angeles, and another one terabyte from uh, terabits from Hong, Hong Kong, no? for a total of two terabits of internet capacity at almost no cost to the government. And this is the bandwidth that we are going to distribute all over the country in terms of our free Wi-Fi, in putting up, especially in putting up fast internet uh, access to all institutional education so that 
our graduates will be ready for the fourth industrial revolution. And I promise President that we will start with the University of Cordillera. The third, we fast track our national broadband plan to convert all government offices to connect all of them down to the barangay level so that our citizens can have access to basic government services online. Our citizens can go to the nearest barangay hall to get online business permits, NDI clearance, passport renewals, driver's license renewals, so on and so forth. For making it easier for our citizens to access the internet by installing free Wi-Fi hotspots all over the country in public places as mandated by the free Wi-Fi law or the RA 10929. This will help the economy a lot. Tourism, especially, I think you have read in this paper that one thing that our tourism industry needs to attract foreign foreigners is connectivity to the internet. No? Foreign tourists does not mind if they cannot take a bath or the bed is not so comfortable as long as they have connectivity with the internet. And we will be putting internet connectivity in these uh, spots that doesn't even have any signal from the commercial telecommunication companies. Also, in uh, places where there are uh, uh, Fisher Fox, no? once they come in early dawn with their cats, they can simply take a picture of their cats upload it to the internet, and it will be available to all market who can now go to them and buy their cats for the day. Also our farmers, vegetable farmers, especially in the mountain province area where there are no signal, have a hard time in uh, marketing their vegetable products, their strawberries, and so on and so forth, because they have to go to the market, and when they go there, then they, find, they also find out that there are no uh, cons consumers for them. No? But if they can communicate, then this will save them a lot of time and money. And there are success stories also. No? For example, in the fourth class municipality of uh, Dimasalang, in Masbate, where the ICT put up fast access to the internet, residents there are earning up to 200,000 pesos a month, creating websites for foreign clients, teaching English to Koreans and Japanese students, medical transcription and other business that are done through internet no so we instead of having all converge into a big bpo office here in metro manila we can scatter all of these uh, small bpos in the countryside and they can earn as much as 200,000 pesos a month and this is in dollars, no? So we have another term or meaning for OFW. Before, you have to go overseas to earn US dollars, no? There are 12 million Filipinos who are now OFWs. But with this, if we can only make our connectivity fast and cheap, then we can have online Filipino workers you don't have to go out of the country. You can work even at home in the most remote areas of the country and earn U.S. dollars. And we call this, uh, all of this will take fruit by 
before the end of 2020. That's why the ICT, we call it our short vision 2020. Before, the, uh, before year 2020 ends, our Filipino citizens will be able to uh, experience a big improvement in our telecommunication services. So that is what is waiting for our new graduates. It's a new paradigm shift from what we have now. It would be as if uh, in the third industrial revolution, we have to uh, make sure that we can handle a computer. Now, it's not enough just to uh, handle a computer, but you must be able to know how to connect your computer, your ideas in that computer to somebody who will need it, no? and then pay you a corresponding amount for that. And whatever jobs you will have in the future, this will be something that will really uh, make you more attractive to job seekers. No? Your ability to be able to use the computer, not only as a typing, uh, as a typewriter, but actually to use it to provide more productivity for yourself, for your company, for your country. So I wish you all good luck. Godspeed to UC Class 2019. You are bound for glory. Thank you very much. <laughs>